All right. Let us begin with a word of prayer, please. Father, we want to thank you for the blessing of today. We ask for your Holy Spirit's teaching and guidance as we are about to cover this important topic. Is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so our topic for this evening, the continuation of our coronavirus COVID-19 series, I just want to draw your attention that the information shared here is meant for general education purpose and it's not intended to substitute for any medical advice nor is any medical care or diagnosis given here this evening. And uh, we are focusing on hydrotherapies that can be used uh, with good success as it has in the past and with many folks and what you can do um, as we encounter certain conditions uh, as you face um, viral infections. There is a quotation taken from the Bible Commentary, Volume 7, page 938, and it tells us that God's miracles do not always bear the outward semblance of miracles. Often they are brought about in a way which looks like the natural course of events. And when we pray for the sick, we also work for them. We answer our own prayers by using the remedies within our reach. Water, wisely applied, is the most powerful remedy as it is used intelligently, favorable results are seen. And God has given us intelligence and he desires us to make the most of his health giving blessings. So water may seem to be something so simple, yet it is highly effective and yet it is available to everyone anywhere in the world. And you don't have to wait for you know, some institution, some building to open their doors at opening hours. You always have water um, that's available to you. And it's important to become informed about its use and how it can be effective in relieving pain and suffering. So we go to pray and ask for God's healing and he will always guide the mind to some simple remedy that works. There are many ways in which water can be applied to relieve pain and check disease. All should become intelligent in its use of simple home treatments. So we're looking at hydrotherapy, the use of water. Now when it comes to different health issues, we're going to show how it can be used. So for example with headaches, uh, which is one of those symptoms that individuals would get in a viral situation. Um, and even for other kinds of health uh, challenges, headaches can be relieved by the use of a cold ice compress that is applied to the head. And as shown in our picture here, if you took uh, a piece of fabric and you put, uh, put it in some ice cold water um, or you simply wet it and stick it in the refrigerator or the freezer uh, and get that really cold. Uh, then you can take it and put it around your forehead but it's good if it is extended all the way to the back of the head and uh, in that way you have the entire head being cooled down and the blood will remove, you know, from being congested within the head and going to the lower part of the body, thereby relieving the, you know, the, the tension and congestion and relieving that headache. Uh, another um, way in which we can apply um, water is for the use of a sore throat. And here we have um, sort of these sore throats uh, uh, wrapped 
uh, you call it like a heat compress um, that is wrapped around, uh, and in this case, the throat. So what is happening here is that you simply take, say for example, um, like a rug, a rug that is in square shape, you fold that in half, and then you fold it in half again, and you wet the middle portion of that rug with some ice cold water. Uh, and you want, you know, it, it is ice cubes in water, it's very cold. Now what you're going to do is to apply it uh, to the neck. So you're probably wondering, a sore throat, and I'm going to put ice cold water to my neck, the same area that's aching, and yes. Uh, what happens with this um, application, it's a little scientific, in that uh, you, as you apply it, um, the initial response of the body is to cause a little um, friction there and it create the reaction of your skin uh, will soon cool down that cold rag and get it hot and the tissues underneath there in, this, in your throat will become um, hot and so that heat now it allows the free circulation of blood in that area uh, removing inflammation and thereby bringing healing to the tissues. And uh, if folks um, actually utilize this and, and wrap that neck for a prolonged period of time, um, you, they would find that the outcome brings great relief uh, to the sore throat. So here is how it is applied. Uh, once you fold your rug to the width of your neck, and you uh, submerge it in some ice cold water. Then next, you place it over the front portion of your neck. Then you get some plastic. So I like to use like the cling wrap, plastic cling wrap from your kitchen, uh, where you extend the length of it, and you carefully fold it in half, and then half again, uh, bringing it to the width of your neck. You take that cling wrap and you wrap around the cold rag. Uh, if you don't have the cling wrap, you can use any plastic that's flexible enough and comfortable enough. Uh, but the means of using that plastic is to retain the moisture that's within the rag. Uh, once you wrap the plastic over, you then take like a scarf or a bandana that you roll on the triangular edge of it and you tie that, um, you know, loosely around the neck. Uh, and uh, most times, individuals are able to sleep with that through the night. Um, it's not tight. Uh, it's, um, even your wrappings, you know, it's not tight and it's not uncomfortable. And uh, when they do sleep with it through the night, having started with a sore throat, by morning, the sore throat is gone. And, um, you know, so it's a simple but yet effective um, remedy that can be used for sore throat. Um, then when it comes to water and um, sickness and disease, you find that water is like one of the best and av um, remedies available for cleansing the tissues. Uh, it also helps to keep one hydrated, especially if they have fever. Um, it, it's important to keep that body uh, hydrated, you know, channeling a lot of water inside as well as externally. And so in a fever situation, it would be good to drink a glass of cold, uh, a dr glass of water, and this is like room temperature water, um, or a little juice every 30 minutes when you're awake. You know, you just keep drinking water and sipping away at that water um, cooling the body down. So I drink lots of water. You may think, well, wow, I've had lots. So anything like 16, 12 glasses, depending on your day, but just keep cool down. I mean, think about it for a moment. If it is that you are witnessing a fire burning down a house and you call for the fire engine, uh, the um, fire trucks to come, they will come. And uh, how about now if they stood, folded their arms and joined you watching on? You'd be infuriated. 
you would think, why don't they just take the hose and out the fire? So the same thing too, when we have high fevers, let's utilize water and quench that heat within the body by the use of water. Uh, and, and it's also a way of protecting your organs and so forth by them not getting excessively hot. So when it comes to resisting viruses, uh, water again is quite helpful in both cold form as well as in hot form. So cold showers, and this is like plain cold showers as a means of um, building up your immune system and resisting uh, viruses. Uh, if you get into the shower and it's cold, and if you did that twice a day, it's going to be helpful. And there are individuals who would think, well, it's wintry cold, and I can't do this. Well, if you were to uh, practice, it would soon become uh, comfortable for you. And another thing too, if you want to keep warm during the day when outside is chilly and cold or your environment in an AC room is very cold, uh, showering with cold water can help um, to keep your feet warm all day uh, because you know of the body's reaction to the cold shower and what it does for boosting you up. So another thing is um, hot and cold contrast showers that's helpful in building viral resistance against viruses. So your hot and cold contrast shower is essentially um, getting into the shower and it's warm and you turn that up, that faucet up as high as you can take it, making it hot. Um, not excessively hot, but as hot as you can tolerate. And then you will uh, next after three minutes of that heat, you turn the faucet all the way and get cold and uh, you want the cold to run on your body for 30 seconds. And then you bring it up hot again for three minutes and then you repeat um, cold for 30 seconds. When you do that, um, you sort of create um, like a tonic, a boosting tonic for the body. Um, it tends to stimulate you, make you more alert. Um, it helps to open up your blood vessels and to relieve inner congestion from your organs uh, and bring you know, fresh blood to uh, various parts of the body, bringing healing. The fresh blood brings nutrients and uh, it also comes along with healing properties, um, elements within the body to help uh, with healing. So there is also another um, item that you can use. This is for nasal congestion and head congestion and coughs. Uh, and so the steam vaporizers are, uh, is another one that can help. And uh, so this is where you take a bowl of hot water and you uh, again add now some drops of eucalyptus oil or peppermint oil or citrus peels or onions um, and you inhale that. You know, these things which can be antiviral, um, as you cover your head, so it's a bowl with hot water, you put any one of these elements in it. Um, and when you say a few drops, you don't want too many drops of the eucalyptus or peppermint oil in there because it, it can be amplified with its heat and the amount that you can actually tolerate for inhaling. Uh, so you cover your head, you cover the bowl or basin, and uh, that heat, uh, it, it vaporizes and gets in, you're inhaling it. Um, you want to do this for 10 minutes, um, and if your situation, you find that you're really congested um, in your sinus area or your upper respiratory tract, um, you can repeat every hour or every two hours and it can be found very helpful. Um, uh, one of the things is that you want to end your um, vapor inhaler with cold, splashing cold uh, to your face and this is like tap temperature water. You just um, put that on your face to close the pores so that your pores isn't left open. And I also want to say, even with a hot and cold contrast shower, after you repeat the cycle with hot and cold three times of it, um, you always end off with colds. 
so just continuing with fever. Um, a lot of times individuals think, well, you know, the temperature goes up and they get anxious and, um, and, and want to get that down as quickly as possible. Good. But understand um, the role of fever within the body. Question, is fever friend or foe? Uh, so when you see fever comes about and your temperature is elevated, it means it's an indicator like a flashing light indicating to you that something is not normal. Um, something isn't right going on in the body. So fever and body temperatures can be um, elevated because of a number of factors. Um, but, it, you know, you um, exert too much energy, you know, you, you overeat, so many little things. Um, uh, uh, you know, you're highly stressed, your temperature can go up. However, in a viral situation, it's an indicator that um, the, the virus is, you know, uh, uh, increasing in your body and, uh, and so the body needs to fight. It's a call, it's a signal uh, to your white blood cells and even to other um, elements within the body like your interferons and so forth to come fight against this virus. So it increases or decreases depending on the elements that work against natural body function. And uh, so interference are these substances that are produced by the body um, that work against the viruses and they're not selective. You know, it doesn't matter the range of viruses that you may be exposed to, they can handle them all. Um, so the, the fever, the body temperature goes up uh, you also find that micro, macrophages and d different kinds of um, white blood cells and so forth, they are just geared up and they get really excited and they um, increase in number. And that just goes to the, um, you know, whatever, wherever there's an infection or a bacteria or virus to combat and just seeks to engulf them and to destroy and remove them from the body. Uh, one of the things too with fever and the applications that we would encourage is to increase perspiration. And perspiration um, tends to allow the skin to eliminate toxins or waste from the blood through the skin. And uh, so just imagine that um, you have uh, different mechanisms in the body uh, and these different cells uh, that are fighting viruses and engulfing them and, and getting rid of them, uh, we need to eliminate um, them out of the body. So perspiration is one way in which that can be eliminated. Hence the reason whenever we perspire for whatever reason uh, and your clothing gets wet with perspiration, it's always good to change that clothing and not reuse it because you will be reabsorbing um, the toxins that's released or so the waste matter that's released in the fabric, you can reabsorb that within the blood. So when you have a fever, most times people do not have an appetite um, and we would encourage that they go on a fruit fast um, for the couple of days that they have the fever. So they can also drink fruit juices and eat fruit um, we find that pineapples, um, oranges, lemons, um, and if you were to make a, a lemon and water mix uh, or without any sugar, um, then that would be quite helpful uh, to keep the body hydrated as well as giving um, good amounts of vitamin C and other, um, uh, other elements that a pineapple would help. It's um, one of those that helps with reducing fever. Uh, we want to um, help give you know the body to to be healed, and uh, so that our goal is that you no longer have the fever. Um, but by applying natural um, methods to the body, natural therapies to the body, by even applying artificial fevers, as I would share in a little bit, um, that allows the body to 
sort of builds what it needs, these little fighter soldiers and natural killer cells um, to fight off this virus and to reduce the viral load within the body in a natural form. So your body is actually at work for you. But however, if it is we were to utilize some artificial means of reducing and suppressing that fever, say like take some drug uh, um, and inject it so that you suppress the fever, you do not allow um, the, the virus to get attacked. All you're doing is lowering temperature within the body, but the virus itself continues to be there and you find that the fevers are lingered over a number of excess days that you then, if you had dealt with it through natural means and allowed the body to work and fight for itself um, to get rid of the fever. Um, once the viral load decreases, you find that the fever will decrease and break, go away. And when the fever breaks, it's an indicator that, yes, you know, what you're doing is working and it's helping. And yes, your body is um, really fighting on the warpath here. And yes, the viral load is decreasing um, and, and you're, you're getting help and recovery, on the road to recovery. So there are a couple of precautions when we are applying heat um, to the body. Uh, if you're helping someone or if you're doing the, the heat therapies for yourself, um, recognize that if there is any challenge with um, your nerve endings not recognizing temperatures, uh, then that can be problematic. So for someone who is paralyzed, unconscious, diabetic, having poor blood circulation, uh, would, would not easily be able to tell what um, the difference between what's extreme hot and extreme, you know, or very near hot. Uh, and so for those, we would use other forms of therapy to achieve um, the goal, but not applying the hot water unless you have, um, you know, some, some really good supervision where you're, they're testing temperatures and so forth. But ordinarily, we cannot um, be the judge for somebody else by feeling the water for them. And most times, individuals with these conditions um, are not able to tell. So they can have, um, you could be applying to them a, a hot sheet pack and it is extremely hot. If you were to put it on you and they would have difficulty in identifying how hot it is. And that can cause problems, trouble within um, as you help, seek to help this person. And so it's better to apply caution and use some other means. So the hot foot bath um, can have benefits. Uh, and it's one that folks tend to think it's quite easy for them to do for themselves or to assist somebody else in doing. Um, it helps to reduce a fever, it helps to strengthen your immune system, relieving a headache um, and inducing sw sweating, perspiration, warming up the body, relieving congestion in the lungs, the brain, um, the chest and any abdominal organ, um, you know, congestion, the hot foot bath helps with this. Um, so uh, essentially what you do is to get a basin and you mix some hot and cold and put water within there and then you put your feet, um, the person is going to put the feet within that water. So you test the temperature and don't start off, you know, very warm because you want to soon um, pour some hot water into that bowl and build the temperature gradually. So you sort of make the water warm, ask the person, let's put your feet into here. And uh, they would put their feet and uh, would be able to, you know, signal to you when it begins to, to get too warm, too hot for them. So as the person puts the feet, you place your hand now. So you have the feet, your hand, and then with your other hand, you're pouring in a kettle with some hot water. As they are pouring, you're pouring this hot water in, you pour a little bit at a time, and with the other hand that's in the water, you sort of weed the water, move it back and forth, back and forth, so you don't have an area of concentrated hot. And as you move that back and forth, 
um, you find that the person would say, yes, it's getting warm. How are you feeling? Is it hot now? Yes, it's getting hot. Is it too hot now? Tell me, yes, it's too hot. It's good. Uh, when the person says it's good, you stop and allow the person now. It's comfortably hot, so it's not hot that they want to draw their feet out of the water. It's comfortably hot. And, um, and so they would be allowed to stay there. Then you take a sheet um, and you drape it around the chest and another sheet, you know, to cover that um, basin, allowing the heat to come up into their body and help them to perspire. You also um, would uh, put, uh, soon they would begin to perspire and you put that cold compress to the head um, and uh, you, to keep the head cool. The person can also drink water, sipping on a straw um, during that time to keep hydrated. Um, you allow the person, essentially like 20 minutes is good. Um, for children, you do less, like 10 minutes for them. Um, but, but for you know, adults, 20 minutes would be a good um, duration to keep the feet in there. Uh, and then another thing is, um, that if, if the person has a weak heart or they're feeble or their heart rate begins to increase rapidly, you can put a cold um, compress or an ice pack over their heart area and allow the heart to just cool down um, in its beat and back to normal um, beat. Uh, another way in which um, you could apply uh, some heat to a painful area is by using a hot water bottle uh, where you simply fill this water bag with some hot water and you can rest that against pain. So, you know, abdominal pain, um, uh, a muscle area, one concentrated spot that's painful. Um, if you fill this with hot water and you have on your clothing and then you put the hot water bag over and then you use like a um, a, a woolen blanket, a flannel um, blanket, or uh, a fleece blanket um, that tends to retain the heat for longer, and you can rest that over the paint area. Um, usually, I like to use this when I put some hot mas application that's massage, say it's a muscle area um, that's heated, um, hurting. You can apply some olive oil mixed with winter green that's good for pain or um, even some drops of oregano can help with pain and relaxing the muscles area and, and then you um, apply the hot bag over and it just helps that whatever you have um, substance you have applied as a massage oil it helps it to be absorbed in the um, in the body um, uh, another thing is that um, you can utilize, um, if you're doing a hot and cold contrast um, to a small portion, you can use this hot bag as the heat to apply instead of a hot rag. You can apply the heat and then with a cold rag um, to do 30 seconds cold friction rub over the area and the heat pack for three minutes. Uh, so I want to introduce you fomentations as a way in which you can utilize what the water um, therapy. So fomentations are essentially where you have fabric and this is uh, up, um, folded uh, and um, in different forms. So you can have one folded multiple times uh, to get the length um, uh, of about three feet or, or, or two and a half feet thereabouts and that basically is most times used for the back area when you want to create some hot um, heat applications to the spinal area. Um, next you will also have some more fabric that you can apply a hot fermentation to the chest and this will be folded in a sort of square shape um, to take the to cover um, just you know your, your chest uh, all the way to like your upper abdomen, not all the way down. And it's just that portion over the lungs that you want to cover with some heat. 
uh, to help to open up the bronchioles and so forth. So this is what you can do um, in a high fever situation. So from the moment you begin to feel the fever coming on, and lots of times folks can tell they have an elevated temperature, it's not very hot yet, but they can tell they don't feel right and they put their hands to their skin and it begins to feel warm. Or you can just be feeling chilled and from the time you, that happens, um, I would suggest that you begin to do some a applications, a hot fermentation. Uh, with a viral situation, um, it's always good to keep the bowels clear, so I'd say, okay, clear the bowels and take a purge. And in our other presentations, we have suggested different means for taking a purge. Um, however, here we want to apply the um, warm fermentation. So you can um, drape the bed with some plastic to protect the mattress. And uh, then you have a light sheet over. And, um, and, and then you put the plastic again where you will allow the person so you, you have the plastic, then you have a light sheet, and then you have the hot fermentation um, that's folded here that you would lay on and allow the person to lay on this to cover the length of their back, the spinal area. And uh, so they're going to lie on this for the duration of this particular hot fermentation um, procedure. Next, if you look here in the picture, you see um, that you have another um, uh, folded fermentation um, sheet, and this is like utilizing hot water. So you heat up some water in some big pots or, or pails, and, and then you, you sink um, the, the towels or the sheets within there. Uh, whatever fabric that you're utilizing, um, you wring that out. You don't want it dripping wet. So you wring it out, you shake it a little bit so it's not extremely hot. And then you fold it um, enough so that you're covering the chest area. The person you're helping would not be naked. They will have on some light clothing. Uh, but you, as you place this over the lungs, it helps to decongest the lungs. Uh, and to open up those air passageways. Uh, as you see in this photo, um, you can also, depending on congestion that might be in the um, sinuses, uh, putting some cold compress to the head, to the face, and the neck, um, allowing you know the heat to be more concentrated below the neck. And um, what happens next is that you you hold this fermentation to the chest for three minutes and then you will have prepared an, a bowl with some ice and water in this bowl with a rag that you are going to next put um, that take that that cold rag after the three minutes hot you remove this fermentation and then you take that cold rag and for 30 seconds you rub, friction rub the area. It is quite um, necessary to have more than one um, fermentation um, packs prepared. So here you have, you can have like about three of these um, all heated up and ready to go. Because after you remove the first one, you take your ice cold rag that's wrong you, again, you don't want it dripping cold. Um, and, and then you just quickly rub the chest, rub the chest, rub the chest with it um, and then you, for 30 seconds. And then you bring back now another um, hot um, towel. And uh, again, it's heat that the person can tolerate and be comfortable with. It's not stinging hot. And if it was, if it was a little hot, you shake it. Um, and you test them, is this comfortable for you? Put it against their skin um, in their hand and work your way up. Is this comfortable? Yes. And then you apply it to the chest um, for another three minutes, followed by another 30 seconds of cold application, and you do that three times. Um, you always would end off with a cold friction to the chest. Um, once this is done, 
uh, and the chest is covered the, the third time. And I want to suggest here highly that women work with women, men work with men. Okay, so it's not like ladies handling men in these cases, that all ladies work with the ladies and the men work with the men. Um, unless it's a husband and wife situation, um, then that's okay. Uh, so once you complete um, that chest application with the hot and cold, again, that brings nutri um, nutrients, fresh blood to the area. Um, every time you bring heat, blood comes, you bring cold, you stop it in its track, you bring heat, it moves along again. Uh, and it also helps in opening up the lungs. Uh, so all of those things would, you know, bring quite good relief to the individuals, especially the chest may feel tight. This helps in, in breaking up that tightness and the mucus right under there. Um, so you also have like some cold, um, friction, uh, cold mitten friction. So once you're finished with the, the chest, um, the person may be perspiring now. You simply take your cold rag and you just rub it down the arms and the legs. So you do the limbs. And so you take one arm at a time with the cold rag and you just rub up and down friction, up and rub down quickly. Don't prolong because you don't want a person now to become chilled. So then you cover the arm and you, you lift the other arm out and you do the same. Then you um, cover that and you go for each leg and you do the same. And finally, you allow the person to sit up um, and remove that hot fermentation that was on their back area for the last 15 minutes while you were working with the individual remove it and do the cold friction rub to their back spinal area. Um, allow the person you to pat dry with a dry towel. They would then change their clothing and lay down to rest and sleep for the next hour to an hour and a half. Uh, sleeping through and at the end of it is important in, in the recovery process. Allowing um, all the energies of the body, what you were working and all along to, and to accomplish the goal and objective, allowing the body to rest. It was just focus on healing um, and, and bringing vitality and even help with, um, you know, getting rid of the viruses and so forth and clearing up the lungs. Um, there is a hot blanket pack and this is usually used for high temperatures of 101 to 104. And uh, um, it is where you are going to wrap the individual with a hot sheet. And um, here, here's what you do. Look in this picture, that tells a thousand words. Uh, so you take the, a hot sheet. Um, again, you would have put this into some hot appeal with hot water. And you wring that sheet carefully. Make sure it's not dripping wet. You shake it out. And then you will now wrap the person. Of course, they'll have underclothing, but you wrap them. Um, and it's not a tight wrap. It is loose that the person can sit uh, for a duration. Now, when this hot sheet is wrapped around, um, you're addressing heat and this artificial fever throughout the entire body um, and, and working on the entire body. It can bring great relief for pain. Um, and, and it's quite soothing and it's quite healing and helpful even with reducing hot, um, hot, hot fevers. You know, so it's a, a, an, another way, um, someone with hot temperatures, you, if you had a bathtub filled with hot water, you can just allow them to soak in that bathtub. But if you don't, then using the hot sheet pack um, and wet sheet pack is quite helpful here. So once this is hot, uh, then you take a dry blanket now and you drape it around the individual, as in this picture, and allow the person now to sit um, for about 12 to 15 minutes. They would cover, um, you know, put a wrap, a cold wrap around the head to keep the head cool and allow the um, blood 
congested blood to remove from the head and go to the lower parts of the body. Uh, this again is another one that will induce perspiration and help to remove virus and toxins um, and waste matter out of the body. Um, it will help with reducing that fever, helping to boost up um, your interferon, your natural killer cells, your macrophages, your white blood cells. Um, it, it helps tremendously with that and allowing your body greater chance of fighting off the viral infection. Uh, once you have done that, um, the, the time passes with 12 to 15 minutes. Now, a little, um, you know, word of caution, if the person's pulse rate increases, if their heart rate increases, you take an ice pack or a cold compress and put it over the heart for 15 minutes and it will just cool that down. Again, allow the person to sip on water with using a straw. And uh, to complete it, um, you allow the person to sleep for about an hour to help with, um, so with, with good recovery. If the temperatures are higher than 100 and, um, 400 and 304, then you can utilize this hot sheet wrap, but for a shorter duration, because remember the person is already hot and you're now going to heat them up some more. So you reduce the timing to about four or five minutes, but that quick acute heat uh, of a short time, um, it's going to just um, boost up the body and then you remove that hot um, wet sheet pack. There are some people who uh, cannot um, say like our diabetics now and those who have um, problems with identifying whether the hot is really hot. Um, so you have folks with poor blood circulation or they're feeble or for children and so forth um, or even people with acute stage of pneumonia, you want, don't want to apply that wet sheet to them. Um, you can use a dry heat and sheet pack. And it's a similar concept so, um, where we have in this picture, this sheet here is dry. It is not wet um, hot that we're putting on. It's a dry sheet. You simply wrap. And then you take a dry blanket and you wrap. But what is going to happen, allow now the person to drink like some warm water and uh, that would help them to um, build a perspiration and that you would achieve the same result. So uh, as we look at, so that's basically a couple pointers for reducing um, heart fevers. There are others that um, can be done, but we just wanted to keep it simple um, for the moment here. Uh, we have um, some uh, coughing that is one of the uh, factors that in a viral situation you find people would be coughing and so a warm foot bath can be used with good success where you add um, eucalyptus leaves to that um, hot foot bath as we demonstrated earlier and then allow the person to sip um, the, a glass of hot water uh, or very warm water while they have their feet in the hot pail and that helps again to relieve the coughing. Um, always protect your neck, keep the shoulders covered um, when you have, um, especially when you have coughing um, as a symptom and you want to relieve that. So eucalyptus leaves in hot foot bath. Eucalyptus oil um, can also be used to help with um, relieving a cough and uh, so the um, can use uh, one cup of boiled honey and you add about eight to ten drops of eucalyptus oil to that um, hot boiled honey. You stir it around thoroughly, you know, keep stirring it around for a good while and, um, and that would be helpful. Uh, let the person, you know, take that in um, and, and take those tablespoons of it uh, and um, like every 15 minutes, you know, depending on the severity of the cough, um, or it could be like every 30 minutes, um, you know, they take tablespoons of it and it can help to relieve uh, chronic cough, um, dry cough that's been lingering for quite a long time. Um, eucalyptus in honey is one of those great things. Um, it is also what I call a divine remedy 
in, because you can find it in Second Selected Messages, page 300, paragraph 2, um, where we're told that it is um, one of those items that can be used, and especially before retiring at night, um, it can be helpful with that coughing. I've had um, several you know, experiences using this with individuals, and whereas like in this particular neighbor, she had a cough for about two months, and having gone to all the um, institutions for help um, and not being able to get it um, you know, stopped, and it was a, a chronic, rattling, hard, heavy cough. And um, by using this uh, eucalyptus and honey combination, um, that very night she was able to sleep well because she hadn't done so um, for the past two months. And uh, so um, basically uh, that's what we would cover for this evening in terms of the um, hydrotherapies that can be used and we find that, um, that now the times in which we live, it's a solemn time. It's one that is, you know, in our lifetime we haven't faced, uh, you know, circumstances like this. Uh, but not only is it a difficult time for us, but it is uh, a crucial time in Earth's history. And for all that is happening, we need to uh, give close attention to the spiritual component of um, you know, what, what's happening in our society today. So while we take care of our health and while we boost our immune system and while we um, apply you know, these natural remedies to bring relief to our aches, our pains, the fevers, the coughing, um, or even other symptoms of, of virus situations, uh, we still need to bear in mind before and during our time of, of discomfort that we are living in the end of time. And it is a time when we are to recognize that it would get worse. Um, God's spirit is gradually being withdrawn from the earth and uh, life is not the same as we are accustomed to. We can expect that we are living in the time of the investigative judgment. And so it is important for us to daily commit and recommit our lives to Christ, um, to daily seek to grow in our spiritual walk with Him, and to repent and to be ready um, for His soon appearing. Plagues and judgments are already falling upon the despises of the grace of God. The calamities by sea and land and sea, the unsettled state of society, the alarms of war are portentous and they forecast approaching events of the greatest magnitude. The agencies of evil, this is important here, the agencies of evil are combining their forces and consolidating and they are strengthening for the last great crisis. Great changes are soon to take place in our world and the final movements will be rapid ones. So let us not be caught off guard but, and let us not be caught up in um, all the news media uh, news and things that are happening. Yes, what is happening, it is important um, for us to be aware and to you know, position ourselves rightly Yes, but at the same time, let us not neglect the spiritual aspect of the times in which we live and the status of our lives. And so we encourage all to um, you know, give this some close attention and to do all that is possible within your, um, your reach and, and within your decisions and choices um, to be able to, to live through this time um, successfully to do all that you can to f come into harmony with um, all of God's laws, the health laws as well as all of his other laws, so that you can be found fit and ready to go home in heaven with him. So may the Lord richly bless us as we conclude 
it with our section. Again, you may go to our website and be able to find there um, the recordings uh, which is also posted on our YouTube channel.